Hey everyone, welcome back for Medical Coding Review. Guess what section we're going over today? All right, so today we're going over the respiratory section and we're gonna start out just like I did last time. We're gonna go over a little bit of, hey, what is in the CPT section here? So let's talk about what is in CPT. So the respiratory section is not a huge one in CPT. I've worked mostly in the past with some of the nose repairs because of all the plastic surgery I used to do, right? So we have starting with the nose and then kind of going deeper down, we have our incisions, excisions. You're probably starting to get familiar with this pattern now, right? Removal of a foreign body. So that's for patients that have had foreign bodies lodged up their nose. Repair. So that could be things like if a patient was hit by a basketball and need a repair. That could even be if they just needed a repair because of cosmetic purposes. Also destructions, so like the lesions and nasal turbinates that need to be destroyed, and then other procedures of the nose. After that, we get to our accessory sinuses. So again, incision, excision, endoscopies, and then other procedures, and then we're going further deeper down into the larynx. Excision, introduction into the larynx, endoscopies, repairs of the larynx, destruction, so again, probably lesions, polyps type things, and then other procedures. Then we have our trachea and bronchi, incision, endoscopy, bronchial thermoplasty, and then introduction, excisions and repairs, and then other procedures of the trachea and bronchi, deeper down still. Now we're into the lungs and pleura. So we have our incision, excisions, or resections, removals. So those could even be things like lobectomies, introduction and removal, destruction. So video assisted thoracic surgery or VATS, and we're actually gonna go over a VATS case today. And then stereotactic radiation therapy for the lungs, repair lung transplants, as well as surgical collapse therapy, thoracoplasty, and other procedures. Now, as we discuss ICD-10-CM of the respiratory system, a lot of them are going to be in Chapter 10, right? So that's mostly what I've included here. And if you look at what we have in Chapter 10, we have upper respiratory infections, flu and pneumonia, acute lower respiratory infections, other diseases of the upper respiratory tract, chronic lower respiratory diseases, lung diseases due to external agents, other respiratory diseases principally, principally in affecting the interstitium, superative and necrotic conditions of the lower respiratory tract, other diseases of the pleura, and then intraoperative and post-procedural complications and disorders of the respiratory system not elsewhere classified, and then other diseases of the respiratory system. So you're going to see in here a lot of things like COPD, upper respiratory infections, lower respiratory infections, flu, pneumonia, asthma, those are all going to be those J codes. So when you see a J code, that's going to be a respiratory system. Now, some of the important concepts that you want to concentrate on are your COPD guidelines. And actually, let's take a look at some of the different guidelines that we have in the manual. So one of the first things they're going to have here is about COPD and asthma. And this is our chapter 10 guidelines in your ICD-10 CM manual. So it says here that the codes and categories J44 and J45 distinguish between uncomplicated cases and those in acute exacerbation. So that's an important one to know when you're coding for COPD. You have to know if it is just uh, COPD or if there's an exacerbation. There's two different codes for those concepts. And an acute exacerbation is it worsening or a decompensation of a chronic condition and an acute exacerbation is not equivalent to an infection superimposed on a chronic condition though an exacerbation may be triggered by an infection another important concept to understand with copd and asthma is that if a patient has an exacerbation of their COPD, that doesn't necessarily mean that the asthma is exacerbated as well. So there's some key things you need to look at when you're reviewing the documentation there for exacerbations because the COPD exacerbation doesn't necessarily mean the asthma is exacerbated as well in patients that have COPD and asthma. 
And with asthma, there's a lot of different specificity. In fact, let's jump into our asthma section and see some of the stuff because you're going to want to look at those keywords for asthma and abstract to the highest specificity because there's a lot of different things. So category J45 is asthma, and there is an include, includes note here. So you would not code separately for any of these conditions because that's all included in this J45 for asthma. Now, when we look at our asthma codes, there's a lot of different specificities here. So each one has indications for things like mild intermittent, uh, with acute exacerbation and with status asthmaticus. And we have like mild intermittent asthma, mild persistent asthma, moderate persistent asthma. We have uh, moderate ooh, down to severe persistent asthma. And then we have other and unspecified. And oftentimes this is what a lot of providers will do. They'll just say asthma and we have to actually use this J45909 code. That's the default code, which is unspecified asthma, uncomplicated. So if they don't say if it's complicated or uncomplicated, the default then would be uncomplicated asthma. So it's really important to even talk to providers about the specificity with asthma. Sometimes EMRs are helpful with them. Sometimes they're not. But the, those are some of the keywords you want to look for when you're coding for asthma and abstracting the right code. The severity, and then is it uncomplicated? Is it with an acute exacerbation or is it with status asthmaticus? So those are some of the things you definitely want to keep in your mind when you're coding for asthma. Now, another key thing that comes up in the diagnosis coding for these procedures is they want to know about any kind of tobacco use, abuse, history, exposure to. So just about any respiratory condition that you look at in the ICD-10-CM manual, they're going to have in the little notes here that say use additional codes to identify exposure to tobacco uh, products or smoke if they have a history of using tobacco, if they are uh, occupationally exposed, if they're dependent on tobacco, if they're using tobacco, so because that does impact a lot of things with respiratory conditions. So they're guiding you in the ICD-10-CM book to use the additional codes for those tobacco related disorders. And then VATS procedures is one that comes up a lot in the curriculum material. It comes up in the study guides. It comes up in the practice questions. And oftentimes when you see that repeated, if you see something that's in your curriculum, you see it in the study guides, you see it in the practice questions, it's more likely that the AAPC or whatever, you know, AHIMA, whoever, is going to include that in their test bank which means there's a much higher likelihood you'll see it on your exam. Now, not guaranteed you'll see it on your exam because there are, at least for the CPC exam, I know, several different editions. I would say, uh, I would say at least six. I don't know exactly how many, but they have several different versions that they give exam takers because they don't want, obviously, anyone memorizing the questions and answers and just giving it to whoever you know, else to take the exam. So there are several different editions of the exam. So even if you're sitting next to someone at an exam, they will probably have a different version of the exam than you do. So you can't just copy their answers, right? So basically they have this big database of questions that are for the exam. And then they, every year they go through and update whatever ones have been deleted, revised as far as codes go. Uh, they might add some new things in, take some new things out. And then they pull probably 150 to formulate the exams for that year. So there's a good chance that something that's going to be repeated is in that database and then likely going to get onto your version of the exam that you're taking. So the function of the respiratory system is to deliver oxygen to the blood and transport it to the cells of the body. And it's responsible for excreting the waste product of cellular respiration, which is carbon dioxide. So we inhale the oxygen, exhale the carbon dioxide. It also filters, cleanses, warms, and humidifies air that's taken into the lungs. It regulates the pH of the blood and helps the production of things like sound for speech and things like singing. And there are anatomical illustrations of the respiratory systems in your medical coding books. So it's good to know where these are in case you get a question on anatomy that you're not familiar with, that you can reference those. So in the CPT book, there is anatomical illustrations in the table of contents for the respiratory sec se section. So if you go into CPT, go right to the respiratory section 
in that table of contents, there's a couple of illustrations there. So if you get an anatomical question and you're like, oh gosh, I don't know this, you might be able to figure it out through some of those illustrations. Now, depending on the ICD-10-CM version you have, though, you may or may not have anatomical illustrations. I have the AAPC version of the ICD-10-CM book, and there are illustrations on the respiratory section on pages 33 through 35 in the AAPC edition. If you have Optum or TCI or AHA or whatever, you might not have anatomical illustrations or they might be located somewhere else. So it's important to get familiar with your books even from that aspect so that if you get a question you can't remember and you think an anatomical illustration will help that you know where those illustrations are. Um, one thing I will also mention is you know, my AAPC book, I think is fantastic for taking the CPC exam. But I actually recently came to realize that there are very specific editions of ICD-10-CM for the AHIMA exams. So if you're planning on getting dual certified, you actually can't use the AAPC edition of the ICD-10-CM manual for an AHIMA exam. They have a very strict listing on the AHIMA website. You can find it if you just Google whatever credential you're going for. They'll give you that listing of books and they will verify those ISBN numbers of the books to make sure that you have the exact correct edition and the exact year version everything. So let's get into one of our first questions here. Three-year-old patient presents to the provider office for extraction of a marble that is located in the right nostril. I am very thankful that my kid was not one that liked to stick things up her nose, which she easily could have. She was a kid that had a lot of uh, small toys, Hatchimals and stuff. And man, kids like to stick those all kinds of places, but thankfully it wasn't ever in her ears or her nose or anything like that. So let's take a look at this question and piece this together. Three-year-old patient presents to the office for a extraction of a marble in the right nostril. What CPT code is utilized? So where are we going to start? So where we actually start with this, if we're going to look in the alphabetic index, would be with the word nose. So you would start with nose, removal, and then foreign body, and it'll take you to the right code. The other option you have during exams is you could just go right to these codes. You can kind of see that they're pretty close together, 30320, 30300, 30100, 30160. So it is possible to go right to those sections and review them there. Now, the other thing I want to mention is if you look at this, there's no what is this right nose RT modifiers on there. So, you know, sometimes with these procedures, if it's something like the nose, sometimes they will take a modifier. Is it going to make or break if a RT LT is not on there? Sometimes it, it really doesn't. Um, there are some codes that, you know, depending on payers, they might not want an RT LT, even if it does kind of fit. Um, and the encoder product products might say that it will take an RTLT. Uh, so in this case, you probably could use an RT on it, but the options that we have right here do not have the modifier on it. So we're not going to worry about the fact that an RT is not present, is present, whatever. We're just looking specifically at the CPT codes. So if we go to nose removal foreign body, it's going to direct us to the code, but let's actually just look up the codes too. Let's see what that will do for us. So here, I would assume as I'm going through and just looking at this page, here's our removal of a foreign body. And that's what it sounds like we're doing here, right? We're removing a foreign body. Um, but I guess we want to differentiate if it's between a nostril versus maybe there's a foreign body that could be lodged in the skin of the nose. So let's take a look here. So removal of foreign body, intranasal, so that's inside of the nose, office type procedure. What was that? Oh, office. So yeah, so we can see right here, and I'm going to get my highlighter out to kind of show you highlighter. This says it was in a provider office. Woo, there we go, provider office. And it was the right nostril. So that's what we're looking for here because these, if we follow our, our uh, semicolon, this one is office type procedure. This one's requiring general anesthesia. That doesn't say general anesthesia anywhere on this sample. Um, bilateral rhinotomy, nope, definitely not that. Right away, I'm thinking this 30300. What the heck is this 30320? That's this one. We didn't do that. 30100? 301. 301 is a biopsy. That's definitely not what we did. And 610. 
is related to like excisions of the turbinates and that's not what we did either. So I'm believing that we did 30300, removal of foreign body in the office because that's what we have here, provider office. So let's see. It is in fact 30300, so that's the right code. And again, if you looked this up in the alphabetic index in the back, you would go to nose and then removal and then foreign body, and that's where it would direct you to this code. Now next we have 57 year old male smoker presents with cough, wheezing, slurred speech, and weight loss. Chest x-ray performed today demonstrates large unresectable left upper lobe mass and brain scan is suspicious for metastasis. Under fluoroscopic guidance in an outpatient facility, a percutaneous needle biopsy of the left lung is performed for histopathology and tumor markers. A diagnosis of small cell carcinoma is made and patient is referred for additional treatment. What CPT and ICD-10 CM codes are reported? So the first thing I'm going to do when I look at this is probably figure out my final diagnosis code because I can kind of see here there's a bunch of of options that have different diagnosis codes. And that's what I'm gonna hone in on, that and this 77002 thing. So that's what I would look at first, is maybe start with this small cell carcinoma. So small cell carcinoma. And it was on what side of the lung? Cause that's gonna, okay, it was left, left lung. And I'm not gonna worry about these signs and symptoms because it sounds like everything cough, wheezing, slurred speech, that would probably be related to the fact that the patient has lung cancer. So if we look at our options A, B, C, and D, I'm thinking that option A there, and I know C's are cancer codes. So right away, I'm thinking probably not C because that, option C, because that starts with R22.2. You see that here? Let me get it over here. Yep. R22.2. That I don't think is a cancer code because the cancer codes usually start with C. So I don't think this option here is probably right. And then option A, I'm guessing these are probably all these signs and symptoms. I'm thinking this is probably this cough, wheezing, slurred speech. And if we have a final definitive diagnosis, I'm not gonna code those signs and symptoms. So I've already narrowed it down to either B or C. Now those look like they both have the same diagnosis code. Um, so let me just show you here, we've got C14, I'm sorry, C34.12, C34.12. And I'm ruling out A and, and C. I'm just gonna stop looking at them right now. So at this point, if we're doing process of elimination, we wouldn't even need to look at the diagnosis codes. We would basically have to figure out is this 77002 code appropriate because this one has it and option D does not. Now, just to kind of demonstrate to you how we look up the, the ICD-10-CM code, don't forget that this is our table of neoplasm. So if we go to lung, we can see it breaks it down though by different lobes. So now we have to kind of go back and go, well, what, what lobe was this? So if we look through our documentation, it does show us that here it was the left upper lobe. So what you would need to do is go here and there is, I believe one for left upper lobe, C34.1, but then you're gonna need the additional character extension for is it right or left? And that's where you would go by to verify that additional fifth character, which would be the two for the left side. But let's go over to this CPT code that we wanna look at. And that is, what is it? 32408. So 32408 says that it is a core needle biopsy, lung or mediastinum, percutaneous, including imaging guidance when performed. Now here is where our big clue is. It says do not report 32408 in conjunction with 36942, 77002, which is our option B. And it basically tells us that that code is not going to be reported in addition with this. So in that case, where we're looking at one option that has this 77002 included and one option that does not have it included, we're going to go with option D. So yeah, so option B. So where you would find this in the CPT guide is you would go to in the index needle biopsy and then lung and it would tell you to look at 32408 and then you can verify as you're looking at the guidance here that that needle biopsy is already included. 
And then we have C3412 is for the left lung. So we have LT modifier. We have the left lung diagnosis code attached to that. And again, I showed you, you just go to the neoplasm table, follow it through, verify it in the tabular list. Next one, 65 year old patient is complaining of difficulty breathing. Patient is scheduled for a diagnostic VATS, video assisted thoroscopic surgery. Now, if you remember when we went through the index, there is a specific section in respiratory for these VATS procedures. Under general anesthesia, he was placed in a left lateral decubitus position and a thoroscope was inserted through a port. The VATS exploration immediately revealed a mass of the right upper lobe. Biopsy was performed and sent to pathology. Results from pathology revealed a small cell carcinoma. The decision was made to perform VATS and remove the upper lobe of the right lung. What CPTs are reported? So this was a lot going on. Now, first off, I want to draw your attention to the fact that there's no, there's not looking for ICD-10-CM codes. So we don't need to worry too much about the results from the pathology and that it was a small cell carcinoma. Just yeet that out of your mind because it's not going to be even questioned. They're not looking for ICD-10. They are looking for CPT in this question. So it looks like the VATS procedures are in 228 and there is a fair amount of them. So what kind of VATS did we did? So one thing to note here is this started out as diagnostic and then it turned into surgical because we are, we're assessing the patient. We're like, Hey, they're having difficulty breathing. We're going to uh, place this thoroscope. That's an important part. And uh, there was a port. We did the VATS exploration and then it had this mass and then we did this biopsy and then right away it was cancerous. So we removed the upper lobe of the right lung. So this was a diagnostic that turned surgical. Now, what do we know about procedures when they're diagnostic and turn surgical? Do we build both of them? No, because surgical procedures include the diagnostic. So we're not going to report two codes here. We're probably just going to report one for the surgery. So let's take a look. So just using the process of elimination method, I'm thinking B and C are out the door right away because those are probably both the surgical and diagnostic. And we're, I'm thinking just going to look for a surgical procedure. So our VATS procedures start with code 32601 and option D is 32480. So that doesn't even sound to me like it's in the right section, 32480. So 32480 is a lobectomy, but we didn't do this removal of lung. We did a VATS procedure. So I've kind of process of eliminated really easily and it looks like answer A, but let's just take a look at answer A, 32663. So 32663, this is, okay, we gotta get down to our first section of here with our semicolons. Thoracoscopy, surgical, good, because we don't want a diagnostic because the surgical includes the diagnostic. So thor thoracoscopy, surgical, with lobectomy, single lobe. So we remove the upper lobe of the right lung. So that would be a single lobe, right? So 32663, three. yep, that looks like exactly what we did. Um, this option B includes a 32607. So 32607 would be, yep, diagnostic. And the surgical includes the diagnostic, so we're not gonna build both of those. And then option C, I don't even know what that, 32609? 32609 is also diagnostic. So we're not gonna include the diagnostic because it's surgical. So option A. Okay, last one, patient presents to the emergency room with respiratory complaints. Final diagnosis is COPD with acute bronchitis due to echovirus. What ICD-10-CM codes should be utilized? So it looks like based off of the answers, we're gonna need two codes. So the presenting ER respiratory complaints, we're not gonna worry about coding for respiratory complaints because we have a final diagnosis here. And that final diagnosis is COPD with acute bronchitis due to echovirus. I'm thinking COPD with acute bronchitis might be a combination code, and then we're coding secondly for echovirus. Now, again, we can tackle this a couple different ways. We can see here that there's a couple of things going on here. Let me get my marker so we can kind of look at these answers that we've got. So we've got a J44.9, we've got a J44.0, 
And then these ones have some J20.7s. This one doesn't have J20.7, but this has J44.9 and J40. And this one has J40 and J20.9. So these are all kind of right around the same area, J44.9, J44.0. So we could start right there. We could go right to the J44 category and kind of look at some of these codes and see what's going on there. Um, if we wanted to start with the alphabetic index though, we would actually start with the word disease and then go from disease to pulmonary to chronic obstructive. That's how you look for COPD. Uh, and then it will tell you that with acute bronchitis. So actually, let me show you that in the alphabetic index. So we've got disease, pulmonary, chronic obstructive. That's our default code, but that's not what we want because we have more specificity here. We know that it's with, and then it says right there, acute bronchitis, which we have highlighted. Um, is there an exacerbation? No. Lower respiratory infection? No. Do we have anything here about echovirus? Doesn't look like it. So it, we're probably going to need two codes. We're going to need this with acute bronchitis, which is our J44.0. And I'm going to check and see if it tells us there. I, you could check J44.0 and see if it tells you like what the codes are to use additionally and might list echovirus there. Um, if not, we would have to kind of then figure out how, how do we get to that infection code. But let's start with J44.0 and see, what it, see where it leads us. So J44.0, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease with acute lower respiratory infection. And it does say to code also to identify the infection, but it's not kind to us here where sometimes it'll tell us like, here's some of the additional codes that you might consider. So we're going to have to figure out what the code is for echovirus, but we're definitely looking at J44.0. So let's see where that brings us on our process of elimination. So if we're looking at J44.0, technically right away, like we've already actually eliminated that. A's out, C's out, D's out. So we're only left with B, but for demonstration purposes, let me show you how you get to the type of infection. So oddly, if you look up echovirus in the alphabetic index, it will take you to B97.12. Echovirus as the disease, cause of disease is classified elsewhere, but we're looking for one that kind of coordinates it with the bronchitis. So if you go in the index to bronchitis, acute or subacute, and then due to virus, echovirus, it'll take you over then to the J20.7, which is the acute bronchitis due to echovirus. So there it is, the acute bronchitis due to echovirus. So in the case of this one, we're going to be going for option B, which is the J44.0 for the COPD with acute bronchitis, and then J20.7, which is the acute bronchitis is due to the echovirus. And that's one of the key things to kind of look at, because you could easily get confused with that echovirus code and want to use the B, but you can see here with that word due to, so we have here COPD with acute bronchitis, and then bronchitis due to echovirus. And that really is more correlating with this code, the acute bronchitis due to the echovirus. And actually I should probably underline the word acute there too. Whoop, where's my, there we go, acute. So that's it for the respiratory section. It's actually a fairly short section, but there are some really pertinent guidelines, especially with asthma, COPD, bronchitis, <laughs> influenza. So you want to make sure that you're familiar with some of the different respiratory conditions, especially in things like risk adjustment, they'll come up to a lot. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know how, what you feel about the new format where I kind of show you the book, me, the answers, a little bit of the question, and we highlight. Let me know if they find that helpful because I feel like it's probably been a lot more helpful. Definitely drop me a comment below. I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, you just keep on coding on.